please visit sleephappia.org to get more videos like this one, as well as audio and blog content. Join us at sleepapnea.org to be included in the conversation and updated whenever new programs are available. Thanks for joining us, and enjoy! Hi everybody, my name is Kevin Bradley, and welcome to another speak ser speaker series with the American Sleep Apnea Association. So, I'm really honored tonight to have Sandra and Brett Cheney. Hello. Hi, Kevin. We're happy to be here. Thank you so much. So, guys, what you don't know is on August 19th, 2020, Brian Cheney, their son, passed away in his sleep due to complications related to sleep apnea at the age of 25. Brian was just getting started in his adult life. He was engaged to be married and in the process of purchasing his house well, this life was cut short. I'd like to introduce these brave parents again, Sandy and Brad Cheney, and I am so happy you guys are on here to, ch to share the story of um, what happened with your son. So again, welcome. And this is a very tender and heartbreaking so story. And um, I, I, I just wanted to say that, you know, we talked a couple of weeks ago and um, we, we did have a pre-interview, you know, before this. And I really appreciate the fact that you guys are so open and honest and willing to share your story regarding Brian's journey. But I, I wanted to start by saying, you know, can, can we start by saying, like, what happened to Brian or, you know, what was his sleep app journey like? Right. Right. Sure. So um, somewhere around um, the fall of 2019, Brian started to, so I guess probably to back up and say, you know, I'm a sleep app, a CPAP user myself and have sleep apnea. And you know, I went through the journey with my own sleep apnea, so I had a pretty good idea of what those symptoms were. Um, in the fall of 2019, Brian started to exhibit a lot of the symptoms of sleep apnea. He had um, fatigue. He actually got in a car accident where he fell asleep at the wheel and hit the car in front of him. So um, somewhere in like that fall, we started trying to get him into treatment for his sleep apnea. And what we found is even with insurance in place, it was a really difficult process. Um, you know, I think a lot of it was because of his age, but um, you know, it was hard to get him the appointment. And this was even before COVID. I mean, it was hard to get the doctors to listen to get him the appointment. And, and we just, it took a lot of pushing to get him into that system. And so they did not, do an in-lab test, he had a home test, and he finally got through all that and got his CPAP. And, you know, when he was home, he used it pretty regularly, but um, being a 25-year-old young man, he didn't always sleep at home. And um, <coughs> you know, he didn't take his CPAP with him when he wasn't at home. So, you know, like I said, he had, um, he was engaged. They had actually just booked their wedding. They were planning it. And um, he was at his fiance's that night and all of that stress buying a house, you know, we think that contributed, but he didn't have the CPAP and he ended up having um, a heart incident and really never woke up. Yeah. He had been with the CPAP machine for some number of months, I think. He got it started with the CPAP machine, I guess, in the spring. And so, and even, it's not like that was the first time he'd ever skipped using it. So, you know, if, again, when he wasn't at home, he, he sometimes took it with him, but, he, but not all the time. And so. It was the unplanned trips where it was, right. where, where it was really a problem. Right. Yeah. But he was, you know, only a matter of months into using the CPAP machine um, before this happened. But I, I think when we spoke earlier, you know, a couple of weeks ago, you did say, 
Brian was very adherent to his therapy. He was using it all the time. And you raise a great point that, you know, then I think we, we spoke about the fact that he worked away from home or it was with his fiance. And that night he didn't have his machine. Yeah. He, he worked in um, the pool business. So he, you know, because of that, he kind of traveled um, east of here. And so you know, it made for some long nights, long days, that kind of thing. So, you know, sometimes he, he and his boss stayed on the road or, or different things. And so um, if he knew he was going to be away, he was very good about taking his machine. If he went on a trip or anything like that, he would take his machine with him. But it was the unplanned kind of thing where it really became an issue um, for him. Right, but he wasn't inherent when he was at home. He wasn't yeah. He wasn't philosophically opposed to using it, or he was very willing to use it because he saw the success that his mother had. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah, you're right, Brett, because I was going to come to Sandy and say, you're a CPAP user. And um, was it through your own experience that you encouraged Brian to get a, a sleep study? Or how did that happen? Was he having issues on his own? Or again, did you encourage him to go and, and seek help? Yeah, I mean, he, he just really was, you know, main thing was fatigue. And he just, no matter how much he slept, he still felt really tired. And, you know, we could hear him snoring. Um, but, you know, the main thing was was the fatigue and just that, that fogginess. And um, from my own journey, I knew exactly what that looked like. I mean, we have um, CPAP users on both sides of the family. Um, you know, on, on Brett's side of the family, my, you know, I have some uncles who had, you know, severe sleep apnea issues all their lives. And, you know, one of the things we've learned through kind of exploring more is, is one of the things we talked about is how the standard of care should be to look at the family. You know, once one member of the family is diagnosed, that you really should be talking to more members of the family. I mean, yeah. we have... Uh, um, one of our young nephews, his uh, daughter is two and a half, and, and she actually just went through uh, a sleep study. You know, uh -huh. very difficult to do on a two and a half year old, obviously. But, yeah. you know, she has some sleep issues that they're going to try to work through and um, different things. But, you know, we know that it runs in both sides of the family. No, and I think you raise a great point there to make it look like, you know, it is familial. And sometimes we feel like, you know, if our parents or, you know, a first degree relative has sleep apnea, then it's a consideration for others. And I think, you know, the point here of highlighting that Brian was 25. Okay. It's like, you know, right. he's young and invincible right. and most people don't feel that way. And, you know, I, I think I saw you pipe in, Brett, to say, like, he was adherent, he was doing everything he needed to do. So, you know, where do you feel that um, insurance or access to the sleep study or availability of machines played a part or did it? It was a big part of it. I mean, if he'd had, you know, we firmly believe if he'd had um, a second machine, if he'd had his machine that night, you know, we would still have him. So, you know, even if you have like, access to a small portable one that, that he could have kept, you know, in his work truck, so he had it if he needed it kind of thing. I mean, you know, in retrospect, we'd have spent millions of dollars for it if we can figure out a way to do it. But, um, it, you know, it, it just, the healthcare system makes it very difficult um, it took a lot of pushing for us to even get his first machine. The doctors were concerned about his age. They didn't feel like he was a good candidate. Um, but he did use it when he was here, and it was making a difference. Right, right. And, I mean, when Brian went for help, do you not feel that, like, did he impress upon the healthcare, you know, his um, GP or, you know, primary care physician that, you know, my mom has sleep apnea? I know you did share with me and I did see a photograph and I, I, you know, feel that Brian was a bigger guy and maybe susceptible to that. Was it like that discussed as a risk factor? Well, you know, being 25, of course, he didn't let his mom go with him to the doctor. So I don't know 
you know, I mean, obviously I pushed him to make sure the doctor knew that, you know, his mom was a CPAP user. He had sleep apnea issues on, on both sides of the family. And I think, you know, the doctor did agree to that and sent him to do the home study, but, you know, the follow-up care wasn't great. We're not positive that, um, you know, that his, you know, at first he was really good about checking his machine for, um, you know, breakthrough breathing and that kind of thing. Um, you know, he definitely was a little self-conscious about the, the machine. Um, you know, he had a fiance, he had friends, but I think around certain people he was okay to carry it. But yeah, I mean, the, the stigma in society for um, using those machines, they're not sexy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, you're right. You're right, Sandy. And you raise a great point there. You're 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 hitting all the points here that we want to make, you know, our community out there aware of. So it's it's all mm -hmm. the above. And you know, again, we get we can't lose the fact that Brian had this condition and maybe, you know, we feel that maybe it could have been better managed, you know? Definitely. So in, in, in some respects, we talked about earlier on, or I, I talked to you when I met with you before, you do have a daughter. Mm -hmm. So what's going on with her? So, um, you know, she's been a snorer for a long time. And she was in between jobs when this happened with Brian. And, you know, obviously after it happened with Brian, um, as a mom, I completely freaked out. And, you know, we needed to get her treated well the journey to just get her tested you know at that point in time she didn't have insurance so we were just paying out of pocket and you know we really had to just push and push and push to get her an appointment to get the home test done to get the home test read it was just ridiculous how hard it was to get through that system right lots of calls to that doctor's office by both jessica and sandy Sorry to hear that. Sorry to hear that. And I, you know, I hope uh, I hope she can get the help that she needs, considering your huge loss already. You know, um, and again, you highlight the importance of having accessibility to doctors taking it seriously that um, it, this affects young people, and um, especially when there's a familial component to this. You know, mom has sleep apnea, brother has sleep apnea. So you would expect that people would take it a little bit more seriously. And I'm sorry, that's not the, the service that you're getting. Um, but again, you know, I really appreciate you coming on board here today to discuss issues like this. So we can try and help people out there in our community get accessibility. Yeah. You know? one, right. of, one of the things that I did, you know, after we got the results from um, Brian that, you know, we knew what had happened. I actually posted a picture of myself in my mask on Facebook. And, you know, we felt like it was important to let other people know what had happened. And, you know, after that time when we had hundreds and hundreds of views, I ended up making it public. And, you know, we had a lot of people who kind of went and got treatment and um, told us, you know, their husband pushed them or their wife pushed them. I had people say, you know, yeah, we both have CPAPs. We don't use them. You know, after Brian, we pulled our CPAP out of the closet and we're, you know, we're trying to use it. Like, yeah. Um, you know. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. That may not be sexy, but no, no, it may not be, but it it makes us sleep better and it makes us feel more energized, and we can cut down on the complications that can lead um, to further complications. Right. Okay. You know, and I think it's wonderful. I mean, again, when I spoke to you a couple of weeks ago, prior to this um, Facebook and uh, speaker series. Uh, recording, like I, I, I do feel it's quite raw for you. It's only August. It's not even a year. I do applaud you for coming on board and, um, you know, being advocates for the American Sleep Apnea Association. Because when we did discuss things, you know, obviously you don't you don't want another family to go through what you did. Certainly mm -hmm. not. That. I mean, we. You know, want to try to do everything we can to make sure another family never has to do this. 
right. And, and, and that's so admirable. It, it really is. Can you tell me what you're doing? I, I do know, and but I'm excited for you guys to share this. And I'm excited because, you know, when I spoke to you before, I told you what my background is and how I work with people in the deceased donor organ realm. But I feel that what you're doing is you're keeping Brian's legacy alive and you're also preventing another family from going through what you did. So tell us about what you're organizing. We're quite excited. Um, so Brian's a big sports guy. You know, anybody who knew him for more than a minute knows that he loved all kinds of sports. And, you know, he liked to play golf. So we talked about ways that we could honor him. So we are actually, um, we are hosting hopefully the first of many years, but the, uh, we have a golf tournament that we will be hosting um, here in the Frederick area. Um, it will be May 21st. It's at Glade Valley Golf Course, and the benefactor for the tournament is the Sleep Apnea Association. So we have quite a few sponsors lined up. We've got a lot of golfers already. We're hoping to get even more, but our hope is, you know, we can spread the word, get, you know, have some of your folks there to advocate and educate and, you know, let people know how important this is. Yeah. And that's really, really wonderful. And I think when we spoke a couple of weeks ago, didn't we say already, I mean, obviously sponsors and, and, and we do as part of the American Sleep Apnea Association, we really appreciate your input on this and, and bringing awareness and your story is, is really important for people to learn. Um, but the fact that you're also raising money so that people out there can get the accessibility and the machines or the equipment that they need um, when insurance is inhibited by that. I think it's it's really, it's, it's a great legacy. And I think I told you on the phone uh, when we spoke a couple of weeks ago that there's going to be a, a long relationship between us. I hope you know that. But from me, the ASA and our community, we really appreciate what you're doing, you know. So when we did talk, there was also things of like, were you doing t-shirts and sponsors for the golf tournament? And yep. you've also raised quite a considerable amount of money so far. Yeah, so far. Uh, I think we're closing in on, um, actually just mailed some checks in today. So yeah, I think we're, you know, coming up around eight, nine thousand dollars so far, but you know, we, we'd love to see even more. That's, that's really amazing. That's really amazing. And I feel, you know, during your loss, uh, I'm again, I hope you feel that you're keeping Brian close to you and you're, you're living his legacy. Cause I'm sure he sounds like the type of guy that would love this anyway, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. If, if you ever met Brian, I mean, he was the type of guy that he wasn't quiet. <laughs> yeah. He was, he was, you knew when he was there, you know, he had lots of friends. Um, he was a really good friend to them. He was always helpful. Um, you know, we've had people, he was very spiritual and he really worked with some of his friends to help them on their spiritual journey. Yeah. Um, yeah. So he's just a person that, it's a big loss in our lives because he just filled the room when he was in it. Yeah. yeah. You know what? He's still filling the room and he's filling a lot of lives out there and Thank you both. Um, I think you're both doing him a great um, justice. And um, unfortunately, you've lost your son. Right. But you know what? I know when we spoke, Sandy and Brad, before, you don't want anybody else to go through the same thing. And that's what you're trying to avoid. And it's very admirable. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, you, 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 you really make me feel like... Um, you know, th this is the best way of honoring something that you lost, which was so precious to you. But the fact that you're reaching out to help other people is just so noble. So we can't thank you enough. And I'm sure our community will be there behind you. Um, we appreciate everything you're doing for 
the American Sleep Apnea Association to bring this to the forefront. Because again, we reached a lot of topics tonight. And um, one of them that resonates with me is age. And it's not age discriminant, you know. So, um, yeah. So I, I think what you're doing is very honorable. And Brian would, I'm sure, judging by what you said about him, he would be, it's just in keeping with his whole persona spiritual giving and, and outlook and I, and I think that's going to he lives on in others you know he was, the, he was the guy who would you know help at the grocery store he would help the little old lady you know unload her groceries and he stopped on the side of the road to help people I mean so we're hoping that we can help other people too yeah well, that's awesome. And Sandy, before I leave, I think I, I, I did hear the other day, and it's not something we talked about, but, you know, we have a mentor program, and you are a, a, a sleep apnea mentor, aren't you? Well, tech, yes, I am. I went through the training. I haven't actually mentored anybody yet, but... <laughs> That's down. great. That's great. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I think you're paying it forward all the way. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And... Um, we, we, we appreciate that as well. And um, anything we can do to put it out there to our community to help prevent any complications is always a plus, you know. Um, and I, I, I just appreciate the fact that you guys were candid about it, came on board um, and um, talked about it. So to summarize again, the golf tournament has happened when? May? It is May 21st. Yes, where? That's a Friday. It's at yeah. Glen Valley Golf Course, which is in Walkersville, Maryland. Okay. And you guys are putting out there, we have, I'm sure on our Sleep Apnea American ASA website, you can become a sponsor. There are also t-shirts, you're doing a raffle, and all the proceeds will go to people that are not able to have access to the equipment and machines and um uh, that that that's just a great great bonus for people out there that are uh, that are struggling because we're all going through it at this time, and especially during COVID, um, when people lose their jobs and insurance, it's it's key. Right. Yep, that's what we're hoping is we can get the masks to people who need them. <laughs> yes, it's <laughs> like uh, it's like us saying vaccinations get the needle in the arm, you know. <laughs> so this is good. Do you want to have any? Um, Final remarks, anything you'd want us to share, any like you've talked about Brian and again, we want to keep his legacy and life alive and spirit. Anything you'd like us to know? Just that, you know, Brian was a really great person and right. we miss him a lot. Yeah. Right. And that sleep time machine's not doing you any good sitting in the closet. Exactly. Exactly. Well, we're so sorry for your loss. And um, again, we appreciate everything you've done for us today. And um, yes, I did ask for you to show a photograph. So go ahead. There he is. That's the man. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sandy and Brett. And thank you, Brian. Thank Thanks, you Kevin, for the opportunity. Okay, you're welcome. I really appreciate you coming on board. Thank you for joining us today. Be an awake angel and you can help those financially impacted by COVID-19. Just $50 can provide two CPAP masks to someone in need. Please visit sleepapnea.org slash donate for details. SAA is a patient-focused organization. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube page, join us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram or sleepapnea.org and you can join the conversation. It's all free.